y'all, and welcome to another review by Ryan. It is I, Ryan, with Review by Ryan. And I hope you all are doing well wherever you're at in the world at the time you find this reaction. It is Sunday, January 8th. So today we welcome back a series that was not so much controversial as it was you just kind of had to feel it out and decide if it was a series that you really wanted to be involved with, Inspectra. So today is the first episode of the second season of Inspectra. And I'm going to be honest because this show did come out right at the beginning of the pandemic. If I remember, it was a winter 2022 anime. So it's been right at three at the three year mark since it came out. There is a lot of little things that I do not remember. What I do remember about the series is that it was a lot of dialogue, a lot of monologue, a lot. And for some of you, um, well, hopefully for those of you that are Seeing this reaction, that means that you liked what you saw enough in the first season that it bought, that it invited you back to the second season. But many people are not going to be joining us for this second season because there was so much monologue. There was so much, as people would consider, dead air that they just didn't feel they could really be intrigued in the show. Um, so let's have a little recap about what transpired. So remember that our two main characters, uh, Kotoko and Kudo, um, basically are superhumans. Um, we, have Ko uh, we have Kotoko, who is the goddess of wisdom. She was kidnapped at an early age uh, by the yokai, who are basically the spirits in this world that they are a dread that they're dealing with. Now she's doing their bidding, and because she is the goddess of wisdom, uh, she will act she can actually dispatch other spirits to address various things, and she can also address spirits that have gone off the wayside. Because basically, while a vast majority are not trying to do bad things in the real human world, there is a very small subset of them that are actually not really doing the things that they're supposed to be doing. And so she's been dispatched now to be able to address those things. But then you have Kudo, who she also coincidentally met in the same hospital um, with a five-year, there was a five-year age gap. I think she was 20 and he was 15 at the time that they met. But he was also in the hospital visiting at the time because he too has the power of superhuman strength, premonition, and, um, and immortality. And it was due to his family's situation and what his grandma put both him and all of his other siblings and relatives through. And um, for those that have forgotten, uh, basically Kudo and then the girl, I think it was Rika or Riku? Um, yeah, I think it was Rika. Um, that, that's his cousin. Uh, they were both put through. They basically had to eat this meat that basically would kill off anyone that wasn't vulnerable. And she was basically trying to see who was going to be able to carry these traits. And so these two, um, uh, Kudo and Rika, uh, were able to adopt premonition and mortality. So they're both able to see the future. Um, they're both able to heal from their injuries uh, with, and even if they die, even if they get their head smashed in, uh, they're able to recover from their injuries, no issues at all. Um, the only difference is that Kudo has kind of accepted his powers. He's really nonchalant about everything while Rika is actively trying to get rid of her powers, which of course led to the Steel Lady arc, which basically took the entirety of the first season of this show. And I think that that is where it really... It, it, it was it was hard for some people to stay attached. First off, this is a investigative, detective, mystery, supernatural show. And as is common with these type of shows, there is a lot of dialogue. There's a lot of discussion. And I think one of the big issues that even I had is that in that discussion, when you got to the end of each episode, you had to really sit here and think, okay, do I feel that all the dialogue and big words that's being used by um, um, Kodoko and everything that's transpired, do I feel that I was actually attached to the show or attached to the events of this episode thanks to the words that she said and by the actions that he took? Or do I feel that it's just like you just said 20 minutes of blur? Because if many of you remember the final episodes, for three solid episodes, it was very limited fighting, basically seeing Kudo just get messed up, seeing Saki just sitting here, the Saki, the ex-girlfriend of Kudo, just kind of just do whatever. And, and we just didn't really feel like we were making a lot of progress, even though we were. And on one side of it, some of you were like, I just can't do this. It's just too much talk and not enough action. And on the other side, like me, I really did just try to pay attention to the words being said. And I, I really liked where they're trying to go. 
in a show where basically normally you'd be trying to uncover the truth, remember that in her case, she is the goddess of wisdom. She already knows everything that's transpiring. She already knows the truth to everything. But in this case, especially when they were dealing with the whole Steel Lady arc, um, it was actually a case of the exact opposite, taking the truths and turning it into fiction, but making the public community that was on the wiki believe in that fiction as if it is the truth. And so lies became truth and truth became lies. And it was a really interesting way that they were trying to present this show. I ended up giving the first season a seven because I respected what they were trying to do. It was a rocky, rocky, rocky boat getting to the end, but I respected what they were trying to do. And despite the fact that uh, Kodoko and Kudo, uh, for face value, would not seem like they have really great chemistry with each other, you know, by the end of the first season, especially with the confession that we ended up, well, you could say the confession that we ended up getting, because he was hella smooth with that when it went into the scene of them holding hands and talking about what was next and um, him visiting and stuff like that. Um, but, you know, I really did like what they were trying to go with this. It's just sometimes I feel about half the show, they didn't really know where they wanted to go with it. And this is very common when you have a theme like this. Um, Mystery-based shows tend to kind of lose their direction and path of where they're trying to go. And that explains why, if you look at, like, Mal, for example, you'll see that the ratings for the first season were kind of mid. They were very mid. It ended, I think, the last time I checked the rating was like right at 6.90, 6.91. Uh, so, and I do think that was more or less accurate with how the show performed. But here I am. I am excited to see what the presentation is going to be for the second show. And if there's anything that I'd like to see better with this second season from the first is maybe a little less dialogue and a little more action and a little more keeping consistency with the plot point. If we're going to talk about the yokai and, uh, and, and that's where our focus is going to be, let that focus be on that. Sometimes we talk about the spirits and then we'd go back randomly to the jealousy between her and Saki, the ex-girlfriend, and then we'll go back to the yokai and we'll talk about the yokai for two more episodes and then we'll go back to jealousy. We, we never really had a, a real path of where we wanted to stay at. Stay consistent on a plot point, execute that plot point, and then move to the next plot point. And I think consistency is going to be key here to if this season is going to be successful or not. Um, but definitely let me know what your thoughts were about the first season. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Do you actually think it was worse than what I said? Or do you think it was better than what I said? Definitely let me know in the comments. But I'm going to go get some water real quick and when I come, and I'll be a split second for y'all, and we'll go ahead and get this first episode of the second season started. All right, guys, I am back and I'm ready to start this first episode of the second season. Just as a kind of a disclaimer too, before I start, because this is a mystery slash supernatural show and because of the fact there's going to probably be a lot of heavy dialogue in this show, very similar to the first season, there may be points during my reaction through, throughout this show that I'm just not speaking at all. Nine out of 10 chances, I'm paying attention to the dialogue. If I see something that really sticks out, I'll react to it. But these type of shows tend to net just maybe a little less reaction from me than other more action-based shows that I tend to watch or more or rom-coms that I tend to watch. So don't mistake that as me either being interested or not being interested. Trust me, my facial expression will show if I'm not interested, but I just wanted to throw that out there that there may be dead points throughout the watching of, the, of this show and the reactions that I do to this. So that said, let's go ahead and get this second season started in three, two, one. Okay, we're jumping straight to the opening. And honestly, they are a pretty cute couple when it all comes down to it. And I'm pretty much a power couple too, because doping them together, the goddess of wisdom, and my man with premonition and immortality and superhuman strength? Come on now. Oh, boy. That's right, and we're definitely going to see more of Rika since we've already thwarted her first plan to try to get rid of her own powers. Oh, who's this girl? I don't think she was in the first season. Also, I really did not watch a lot of the trailers to the show either, so it's 
some of the stuff that I'm seeing in the opening was shown in the trailer, I didn't see it, so. <laughs> Of course, humans can't see any of them. That's right, and because of her status, she has high respect amongst all the spirits. Also, yes, I know that everyone may not be spirits, but because there's so many names to so many different creatures, you're just going to hear me reference them all as spirits, and I'll make corrections later. I oh, should be 20 now. Because I'm correct, when they re-met, she was 17 going on 18, so now it's been two years again. Yes, she is ferocious, possessive, <laughs> everything in between. And her fake stories are so masterful. Very long-winded in her explanation, but masterful regardless. I guess that's what happens when you're the goddess of wisdom. Yes, she has indeed. I do like to, though, since it's been three years, they're given just kind of a brief recap. And he has no regard for his own injuries or life because he's immortal. That's right, it was the meat of the mermaid. I said meat, but I forgot what the meat was of. It was a mermaid. Choker. <laughs> wow, we're moving out now. Now, now, don't be that way. Especially after how the last season ended.
That's when I just give him the whole house. I, I'm just giving him the whole house. And leaving. And I live alone now, so... I hear noises all the time in this house, actually. Yep, that's when I'm out. <laughs> I mean, that can happen with pipes in the wall. Not from a break, but when there's hot to cold changes. But not a thump that big. That's a huge thump. Now how the hell? <laughs> and let me guess he sold the complex the next day because I would have <laughs> y'all on your own I would have had an exorcist there the next day. I wouldn't have wasted another second. I did that was a lie. <laughs> I mean, I wasn't going to ask that question, but I was thinking that too. Oh, that's right, because they did just say that they, that they had, it hadn't even introduced itself and they would have expected it would have introduced itself by now, which is why they're concerned. And particularly him since he's bounded right there. Spectres are involved. R really? A whole dog. Wait just a minute. I mean, yeah, that could be an easily plausible story. But see, sometimes, because I know that she'll lie about certain things, I never know if what she's saying is actually the truth or a lie, if she's hiding whatever she really found. But I'm going to assume this is the truth.
if this is really all it is to it. I just love how dramatic such a simple thing <laughs> is. Like, the music makes this so dramatic. It just seems so ridiculous. Also, I will say this is the difference between Japan and a society like this. Oh. Oh, the man had an exotic reptile? Okay. I guess now this does make more sense. I said dog. It was a whole reptile. They're not even supposed to have. Wow. I mean, still though, so dramatic. Well, it certainly isn't going to affect you now that you're dead. <laughs> that was literally the easiest case and we and we did a whole half the episode on that easy case, I swear. That God's name. Bruh, I slapped the mess out that manager for lying about something like that. Yeah, oh, that, see that's what I said. I thought it was a lie. Like, none of that was true. Okay, like, all right, cool. So, I wasn't going crazy. I was still like, really, we just wasted half an episode on that horrible lie. It was such a bad lie. <laughs> the fact that I even remotely believed that the reptile part at least was real. But it was the doll. Okay. But she just wanted to give them the peace of mind because if she would have told them that it was something that possessed it, you know, it could have been worse later. I'm glad I'm going crazy. I was <laughs> just like, you liar. And that's one thing about this show. I have to assume that anytime she's talking to another entity that's not Kudo, that everything she's saying is probably a lie or at bare minimum is half false.
And apologies, but the only thing I think I might have missed was how the doll got turned back on. I think, I know she was explaining a lot right there, and I think I missed that point, so I'll have to go see that at the end of the episode. Oh, but then again, it's a curse, so the curse could have just reactivated on its own anyway. So he was trying to eradicate, but he just couldn't get through the roof. Bruh. <laughs> However, you're invincible, so that doesn't even matter. <laughs> but it does have to get boring after a while. <laughs> Listen, by the end of her explanations, I'll be asking the same thing. Be like, bruh, you've told me a whole sermon. I just want to get in my bed now. Bro, please don't waltz over here. <laughs> the way it moves, the <laughs> I know it's because it's a sumo wrestler, but still. And see, and of course, he never cares about injuries to himself. It doesn't matter. He's so nonchalant about it. Yep. And that's right, and I need to correct myself. I said that he got both of his powers from eating the mermaid, but I think he really just got the invincibility. He got the other powers from what he ate afterwards. That's right, and that's why it's a trade-off, because he would normally die, yeah. See, there are little things that I forgot. So he can negate the fact that he would normally die. However, my whole thing about that is why it's made his fighting ability so sloppy, though. If there was even remotely a little bit more on stake if he died, then it would sit a little better with me. But he just doesn't have to care. Like, he woke up, and then five, ten minutes later, five, ten seconds later, he's dead again. 
And there's just no, there's nothing, there's nothing staked on living or dying. It's just, is what it is. <laughs> the way this man just nonchalantly gets up, like terrifying as hell. <laughs> We're going to watch his head get squashed again. Oh, no. Now she can send him. Yeah. Oh, it's freezing when she throws her leg off like that. There you have it. And they will be sent back to where you need to stay. Yes, which is why I wish you'd care more about your body. <laughs> yeah. You are literally the almighty being in this entire place. And the two of you together, just unstoppable. Just unstoppable. Okay, so, you know, we more or less picked up where we left off at, you know, following the fight and the, um, the showdown that happened uh, between Steel Lady. And uh, my initial thoughts about this episode and this start to the season is exactly what I stated at the beginning. Um, you know, it's going to be a lot of dialogue because, again, she's the goddess of wisdom. She has to make sure that she's explaining everything and saying everything out loud in as many words and as as high level explanation as possible. Um, and of course, as y'all saw, I flipped back and forth because 90% of me knew what she was saying to the, um, the other ghost uh, was just complete bullshit. So, but then 10% of me, when she brought up that, no, it actually ended up being a reptile not allowed. And I said, oh, okay, I guess. And then y'all saw one minute later, I was like, fuck. How I let her play me already, knowing that she's lying. Because <laughs> that's what she does best. She's already proven that lies are truth and truth are lies. So that was pretty nice. Um, and of course, you know, once again, getting to see the chemistry uh, and the dynamic between uh, Kodoko and Kudo is always great to see. And it's actually a little easier to see now than it was when we were first starting off with the two of them in the first season, especially after how things ended at the end of the first season with their kind of semi-confession, 
Simi just kind of being the way that they're going to be. So, um, so yeah, uh, this was a great episode to bring us back into the world of Inspector and to, you know, what she is, what he is, and particularly just how important of a being that she is to really keeping the balance between the spirit world, between the spectra, between the yokai, between the humans, just keeping that balance in line. Um, it, I think that this was a really nice return episode to bring us back. So since that's the case, nothing's really changed from the first season and nothing's gotten worse either. So all of us who are going to be watching this season just have to accept that heavy dialogue and commentary is just going to be a way of life with this show. And either you're going to pay attention to it and become, you know, very intrigued by it, or you're not going to like it. And I'm not going to be surprised if people kind of float back and forth between both. There was like a good 30, 40 second period in this episode where I was just like, all right, my girl, we can move on now. But, uh, but I do like the explanation because... In my personal opinion, with these type of shows, I prefer getting all the explanation, all the ideologies, the thought process between everything. I prefer getting that than what happens with many other anime that just gloss over everything, skip whole chapters, skip whole segments, skip whole explanations. And so I know that this type of show, with its um, dialogue and its supernatural elements that are supported by heavy dialogue, may not be everybody's cup of tea, but if you really pay attention to the things that are being said, I hope that you will enjoy the delivery and what this show is trying to accomplish. It's a very different type of show in this genre, and again, I just hope for consistency with the story and consistency with the plot, and just, you know, um, just great chemistry as we go about the story of this second arc and this second season. So um, I'm satisfied so far, guys. You know, it's not my strongest opening show of this winter season so far, but it did really damn good. I'm, I'm personally all right with how this started. I will say that this introduction was solid eight. And, you know, I'll look forward to seeing what the rest of its delivery is going to be as we proceed with seeing what Reek is going to be up to next and really what the next big focus of this story will be. So thanks a lot for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed the episode and enjoyed the dialogue. If you did like this reaction video, uh, like the video and consider subscribing to the channel. And especially for those on YouTube, if you want to be one of the first to be notified when a new reaction becomes available, hit the bell icon. So I will see all of you wonderful people next week for the second episode of the second season of Inspectrum. And until that time, catch you later.